Welcome back everybody. For this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the reductive charcoal method in order to draw a sense of light and shadow for your simple object setup. What we're gonna use is in front of you here, I have a chamois cloth. Mine is really dirty. They's, they come in a lighter color, but I've used mine a bunch for charcoal. Um, vine charcoal, this is something that is um, probably familiar to you. Really light, um, brittle, easy to break. I have these blending stubs here. These are great for blending in sh really small shapes of shadows that you might see. I'm gonna be using two erasers because they do two different things. I'm gonna be using my rubber eraser and I'm also gonna be using my kneaded eraser. It's pretty dirty, so maybe I'll give it a couple turns here. See how that's nice and clean kind of in the middle there. This is a really, really fun little tool. I love this thing. So kneaded erasers are great. They're good for making small little erasers and they're good for, um, you know, they have this push to it. It's like a Play-Doh. So you can really like shape your eraser face or the surface of your eraser. And then when it gets really dirty and charcoal or graph, you can <clears throat> simply do this, clean it up reveal some of that whiter gray. It's like a self-cleaning eraser. <laughs> then I'm gonna also be using my charcoal pencils, sharpened and ready to go. I have a soft charcoal pencil and a medium charcoal pencil. If you don't know what these do, just take a little moment. You can see how the soft charcoal pencil has sort of, um, it's like just softer. You can get really dark really fast by just adding pressure. This medium charcoal pencil, it doesn't come out as dark with the same amount of pressure. So it's good to have those options. And then I have a little box cutter here. Maybe you could use a sharp knife. Just be careful, don't cut yourself. I like to use these in order to sharpen my pencils. And I also like to use this in order to cut off little wedge shapes of my eraser like this so I can get even like a different eraser type to draw with. And you'll understand why um, sort of you'll be drawing with your eraser and you'll be understanding why when I show you how to do this reductive charcoal method. So let me clear this stuff off. The first step, the very first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your chamois cloth and your vine charcoal if your vine charcoal is long, I recommend just snapping it in half. Turn it on its side like this, and then cover the entirety of your paper. After you cover the entire surface of your piece of paper with the vine charcoal. Take your chamois cloth and start to rub it in a small circular motion to really work it into the paper. I'm going to start by kind of just looking for highlights and looking for shadows. So when I'm looking for highlights and I'm looking for shadows, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my eraser. I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this. And I'm gonna start drawing with my eraser. So. Blur your eyes. This is so important. Look at your still life. Blur your eyes. You're going to start to see a higher contrast of the simple object within the light than what direct light that you have it set up in. 
I can see the rim of my mug. Let's see, I think I kind of want it over here. The rim of my mug is lighter. So even just in how we've been approaching drawing is just by like keeping our marks pretty light until we feel as though it looks right. And then we can go darker and be more committed with our mark making. So I'm still, I'm gonna be drawing with my eraser just to kind of start, but I'm gonna keep it light. I see that I have some low lights. So I can, I'm actually going to, I know I picked up my charcoal pencils, but one thing that's great about vine charcoal is not only can we create this mid ground and rub it into our paper and erase from it, but this is such a forgiving charcoal medium, fine charcoal is. So I can kind of use this to maybe establish some of my shadows as well. I remember vine charcoal, just like it, it falls off. It falls off the paper super easily. It doesn't stick as much into the paper. So I'm going to go over this later in a charcoal pencil to make sure that it gets really dark and it's a close enough value to the, um, keeping it accurate to what I'm looking at. So instead of using my sham my chamois cloth to blend in this value that I've created, I'm gonna actually use my fingers for this, not my blending stubs either. I'm gonna use my fingers because when you use your fingers to blend in vine charcoal or even charcoal, you're, it's gonna be a little bit darker while the chamois cloth is just going to kind of erase out and pick up whatever charcoal you have on the paper. But with your hands, I think it's the kind of the greasiness of your flesh, the paddedness of your flesh, it does a really good job of keeping that darker. So use your use your fingers, use your hands. This is going to be one of the greatest tools for drawing with charcoal. Maybe I can get it to be a little bit darker on that right hand side since my light is coming from here. There's only so much darkness that you can build up using the vine charcoal. At a certain point you do need to switch to using your charcoal pencils because that's like a nice rich black. As you can see, the vine charcoal it never really becomes black, but it can become 
a, a gray, a dark gray. So once you get to a point where you've kind of arranged some of the low lights, some of the highlights, um, or these, sorry, some of the midtones and some of the highlights, we can start doing some of the shadows now. So I know when I first started this, I said, look for the lights, look for the darks. I've been doing this a long time, so I, I kind of like, I'm just looking at the midtones and the highlights first. So I want you to focus on the highlights and the shadows. So I'm gonna kind of show you a bit now more of the shadows. And I'm establishing that here, but I, I started those with mid-tones instead of going really dark first. And I did that on purpose in order to try to avoid scratching in my charcoal really, really dark and then being like, oh no, I made a mistake. I should have moved that somewhere else. So the charcoal can't be quite as forgiving to get that white of the paper back. So just be cautious of that. And that's why it's great to use fine charcoal to arrange everything where you think you want it to be. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and use my soft charcoal pencil and I'm gonna start drawing in these shadows. And I'm gonna always keep in mind with shadows that it's never gonna be one tone. It's always gonna go from a darker black to a lighter black. Keep that in mind. Blur your eyes and look at your subject. Look at your object. See that there's always many, many values. try to avoid really dark outlines. We do not live in a world where everything is contained by an outline. The world and reality that we live in, the much of the reason that we can move around the world is because there is light and we can see with light um, the dimension of things. So if you do need to use an outline to establish the shape of your mug, that is okay. But keep it really, really light. You're gonna keep your outlines light, but you're gonna kind of like go over them later and make sure that your values are relative to one another. So if this is the highlight here on this mug right there, then this is going to have to be a darker value next to that highlight and there will not be any outlines. So I don't want to see any outlines in this. Mm -hmm. 